So now that we know how to get expected counts, we will look at the test statistic for the goodness of fit tests. Suppose O sub I represents the observed counts of category I and E sub I represents the expected counts of category I and K represents the number of categories and N is the number of independent trials of an experiment. Then the chi-square test statistic is found by adding together, and this is the Greek letter sigma, which means to add them up, the observed minus expected counts squared divided by the expected count. So you take the observed value for each category, subtract the expected value for that category, square it, and then divide by the expected for that category, and you add these up across all the categories that you have. Okay, like for this Benford's law, there are nine categories, so K is nine. This chi-square test statistic is going to approximately follow the chi-square distribution with K minus one degrees of freedom. Provided that all expected frequencies are greater than or equal to one, and no more than 20% of the expected frequencies are less than five. The expected frequencies are computed as N times P for that particular category like we just went over. So to perform a goodness of fit test, it's gonna be the same five steps that we've looked at for all the other hypothesis tests. The first step is to determine the null and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is, as always, a statement of no change, no effect, no difference. In this case, meaning the random variable follows a certain distribution. So it follows the distribution that you think it follows. And then the alternative hypothesis is the random variable does not follow that particular distribution. Step two is the textbook step that you select the level of significance. Step three, we have to go through a series of steps compute the expected values, make sure the model requirements are satisfied, and then get your test statistic and p-value. We will rely on stat crunch to get our p-value. And then step four, if the p is low, the null must go. Step five, state your conclusion. As always, we are not going to be following the classical approach in doing this hypothesis test. So let's go ahead and conduct a goodness of fit test. Here are the counts for the first digit in the stock volume of a randomly selected day. So in 28 of the days, the stock volumes, first digit began with a one. On 16 of the days, the stock's volumes, first digit began with a two and so on. We're going to use the 0.05 level of significance to test whether the first digits of the, of the stock price follow the relative frequencies given by Benford's law. So we're gonna follow the steps that we just gave. This, the null hypothesis is that the stock volumes first digit follows Benford's law. The alternative is that the stock volumes first digit does not follow, I'll be lazy here, Benford's law. So the null is always that this, the, the data follows some specified distribution. The alternative is always it does not follow that distribution. Our textbook step is that the level of significance here is 0 0.05. The third step is to get the p-value. Now I'm not gonna go through the by hand computation here. I'm just gonna rely on StatCrunch to do this but I'll illustrate what's going on with this chi-square test statistic. The chi-square test statistic, remember, is the sum 
of the observed minus the expected squared all over the expected for each category. So for example, here to get the chi-square test statistic, what you'd have to do is compute observed for the first digit being a one minus the expected for the first digit being one. The expected for the first digit being one was 30.1. The, ex the expect for our expected, we always use the table then? The expected is so do we computed from the probability distribution that we think the data follows. And we utilize that for the expected for like any for other problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So like says we had a hundred different stock volumes. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's why N was a hundred here. And then we multiply it and then we compute N times P. Well, what I'm, each of the different categories. So what I'm saying is like on the homework, we would be referring to this table yes. over again and again. There's going to be different distributions that you might encounter. assume follows, right? Okay. okay. When you, if you look in the textbook, the example is about income distribution of household income. Mm -hmm. So there we're, we're comparing the, distribution of income today to the distribution of income back in 2000 and see if the distribution of income has changed. Mm -hmm. Right. Or another example that I have is the distribution of population throughout the U S and is population shifting, meaning are people moving from the Midwest to the South, something like that. Okay. So you're always going to have an existing distribution as part of the problem. And you're going to compare what you would expect if things data follows that existing distribution to what you're actually observing. Gotcha. So that's observed minus expected squared divided by expected. And then for the second category, we observed a first digit of two 16 times. We expected 17.6. See that for mm -hmm. the second first digit? And we square that and divide by 17.6. We keep doing this for all the different categories until we're at the, the last category, which is a first digit of nine. So that would be six minus the expected was 4.6, that's squared, and then divided by 4.6. So that's how the test statistic is going to be computed in StatCrunch. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's go to StatCrunch so you can see how this is done. I went ahead and already entered in the data into StatCrunch. So the first column in the distribute in the data is the first digit. The second column is actually the probability distribution for Benford's law. So this is the we're checking to see whether or not the observed data could follow this probability distribution. And then these are this is the observed actual data. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's the process. It's pretty straightforward. You're going to go stat goodness of fit, chi-square test. And then we fill in this dialog box. The observed column is observed. And then here is the expected column. You select the probability column because we're that's how it's going to compute the expected values. And then you can display the expected values. That way, StatCrunch will give you the expected values, and then you'd be able to enter those as part of your answers. So we're going to actually run the test before we do the model requirements because so that we can get the expected values. Click Compute, and there are the results. 
So again, that was stat goodness of fit and then chi-square test is how we got these results. So notice as part of the output, you get the expected values, mm -hmm. right? It's like there's the expected value for a first digit being 130.1. That's what we computed by hand. There's right. the expected count of the first digit being 2, 17.6. And then there's the expected uh, count of the first digit being 9, 4.6, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we go back now to these steps, we can verify these model requirements. All the expected counts are greater than or equal to one, that's true. And no more than 20% of the expected counts are less than five. We only have one out of nine of our expected counts being less than five. And so that's one out of nine is way less than 20%, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're good to go on our model requirements. Notice then that you get a p-value right there. Oh, so by the way, there's your chi-square test statistic of 3.62. So if we did this computation of observed minus expected squared over expected by hand, we would get 3.62 if we worked that all out. Notice my p-value in the output is 0.88. Nine six, and so we would say something like, if the distribution of first digits for stock volume follow Benford's law, we would expect results such as those observed in about 89 of 100 repetitions of this study, right? I mean, our p-value is massive, massively right. large, yeah. right? And so because our p-value is so large, we are not going to reject the statement in the null hypothesis. So there is not sufficient evidence to conclude first digit of stock volume does not follow Benford's law. In other words, we don't have enough evidence to reject the statement in the null. It's important that you understand something about, or recall something about hypothesis testing. In hypothesis testing, sample data cannot be used to say the statement in the null is true. So you could not say first digit of stock volume does follow Benford's law at all. You can't say that. The only thing you can say is there's not enough evidence to say it doesn't follow. Right. You can't okay. say free or you can only you can't say, say yeah, if stock prices, uh, stock volumes, first digit does follow Benford's law. You cannot say that. 